Happy Friday, everybody. Thank you for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. Today, we're going to take a look back at Search for Tomorrow with two actresses and good friends, Marie Chatham, who played Stephanie Wyatt, and Lisa Peluso, who played Wendy Wilkins Carter. Marie has been a working actress for over 60 plus years and is known to daytime television audiences for her roles on Search, General Hospital, Port Charles, Passions, and Days of Our Lives. She is best known to movie audiences for roles in Beetlejuice, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and The Wedding Singer. Marie says that in her ongoing 60 plus year career as a working actress, pottery continues to save her sanity. She lives in two worlds, Native American and television. In between gigs, she can be found in her pottery studio or the garden. And Lisa Peluso began modeling since the age of four when her mother entered her in a local contest and out of 5,000 babies, she won. At age five, she earned a Screen Actors Guild card and at age 10, appeared opposite Angela Lansbury on Broadway. She is well known to daytime television audiences for her role as Wendy Wilkins McNeil Carter on Search, ABC's Loving as Ava Rescott, Forbes, Alden Masters, as Lila Roberts, Corey Winthrop, I think I forgot, Hart on NBC's Another World, as well as shorter roles on Somerset, Love of Life, As the World Turns, and One Life to Live. She's currently a successful, uh, has a career, success, oh my God, successful career selling real estate in New Jersey. Fans have been asking me for both of these ladies to join us, and I'm so excited that they are here today. Please welcome to the locker room, Marie Chatham and Lisa Peluso. Wow, talk about getting tongue-tied. Ah, Thank you, ladies. Okay. Thank you, ladies. We all get tongue-tied. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> when is the last time the two of you saw each other in person? Oh. When we when you came to Universal when we met City. at uh, Disney, right? Uh, no. Universal, what yeah. was that? Like, You're the only person I would go up to Universal to see. <laughs> so I was visiting my husband's family in Orange County. Mm -hmm. And so we just traveled to, you know, the LA area in, yeah. you know, for a day. Um, and we, we had, you know, the kids, we were going to Universal. And I said, oh, Marie, you know, can you meet us? It's our only day here. We really want to see you. And she was gracious enough to come and join us for you know, very sweet to me. And the kids were, you know, they 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 wanted to hurry through dinner so they could go to the, you know. No, absolutely thing. not. They were totally starstruck because <laughs> Marie was a Nona on Sam and Cat. It's and nice. the kids watched that show and they were like, what? You know <laughs> Nona? Is oh, it, I was like. Yeah, that's the thing about those kid shows that yes, Nickelodeon, like, you get a Marie, whole new like, audience. Marie? And I did most of my stunt yeah. work on that show. Oh, really? So they were stars. Yeah. Well, yeah. fans were asking about uh, Sam and Cat, so they were excited. Uh, but that's so <laughs> funny. Uh, Lisa, I mean, what did you tell them? It was a lifetime ago that you worked with Marie. They, well, they, you know, they don't know me as an actress because I, yeah. I, I early on left the business when my daughter was little. I, I was on One Life to Live. I think that was like the last job that I did when, I mean, she was just like 16 months old. And so they really didn't know I was an actress yeah. for many, many years, to be honest. And then, you know, people would, would say, you know, your mom this and your mom that. And when they were little, it didn't mean anything to them. But as they got older, it started to, what do you mean you went out with so-and-so? And how would, and, and did you kiss them? And, you know, you know and, and, and wait, what do you, and that would get recognized still occasionally. Yeah. And they would look at me like, what is that? You know, like What's they, going they, on, you know? Yeah. Oh, uh, that is really interesting, you know, yeah. to sort of have another life before your children that they know nothing about. Uh -huh. knew, nothing, knew nothing about it. Yeah, I was just. And and you Mom, were. And that's kind of the way I wanted it. Yeah, but you were, I mean, you, you know, you were a big actress for, for you know, at, at a time before your children. So it's, it's fascinating. 
or her yeah. whole other life. My yeah. whole other life. And I was four months old when I started modeling, not four. Yeah. I know that. So I oh, did I say, modeling. sorry, yeah, four I months old. I sounded like a typo. So <laughs> hence why I left. I had done it like literally my whole life. Your whole life. Oh, my whole life. <laughs> that That's crazy. Do you two remember meeting for the first time? Oh, yeah. Honey, I don't. Do you? Oh, I totally do. Because I remember I came in to replace Andrea McArdle. Who grew out of her role. Yes, go yeah, on. <laughs> I know. I came in briefly. She was not. She wasn't in any yet? I, I don't. They hadn't given me the role yet. And so I, I was replacing her, like, oh. I think for the week or something like that. And then she decided to stay on as yeah. Annie. And they hired me. So I remember I remember it vividly because it was almost like my audition week, you know, oh. and I fell madly in love with you. Like you, you just had my heart like from the beginning. Oh, she I'm had, so glad. <laughs> I mean, Maria and I, there's no shortage of affection between us from the start. No. Like no, really, you, she used to come and sleep over and we'd play games until the morning, you know. Oh, it I was love fun that. and funny and yeah, you no, know, just it was like so much. And I fun took her to museums and the, to Broadway shows and stuff. Yeah, that was yeah. great. You used to stay at the Howard Johnson's right down the street from NBC. Yeah, where, where did mm -hmm. uh, Search film? Were they at Thirty Rock? Yeah. No. No. Wait. No. No, we never. Oh, no, no, you were at uh, where I worked at Guiding Light, two twenty two East Forty Fourth. Well, we were there for a bit, but the, we were at 57th Street for 100 years. That's that's oh, right. at the CBS Broadcast Center. CBS yeah. Broadcast Center, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. That's gotcha. what I remember. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Marie, do you remember getting the uh, audition for Stephanie? And, and Oh, my God, do I ever. I went to New York. I was afraid of New York because I had believed everything I had heard on those <laughs> talk shows, you know, I was terrified. Fake and news, said, Marie, fake news. <laughs> oh my God. Well, well, who knew? And so I, I, I said, I'll only come if I can stay at the plaza and because I'm terrified of New York. So they gave me a room at the plaza and uh, a friend of mine came over and we, you know, rehearsed the lines. And then I did the audition and I've forgotten this man's name. He was wonderful. He was a director and um, he directed me. And then he looked at me after the audition and he said, what are you doing auditioning for this? And I said, I need to make some money. And, he, and I said, what are you doing working for them? And he said, I've got to pay my alimony. You know, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was terrified of New York. Oh, good Lord. Well, I good for you. Me. You you asked um, for the Plaza Hotel when daytime television still had money. <laughs> well, believe me, but wait a minute. We were the show that had the organ music when I came. Oh, wow. That's oh, yeah. how long That's ago right. that was. <laughs> Marie, wow. how long were you there before I came? I don't know. I have a problem with with uh, how long. Okay. I can tell you what the weather smelled like, and you know, and everything I, around. I it. love that. That's. I can't do how long. I don't know. Five. We four or five years because Andrea was okay little. So until she got Annie and then she came crying to me afterwards that you were already on the show and everything. And she came crying and she said, I grew out of the role. Aww. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> I grew out of the Annie. Of Annie. Yeah. Yeah. And do you remember your first day on set, Marie? Oh, do I ever. Mary Stewart scared the living pee out of me. <laughs> she did. And my feet were always just frozen, frozen in New York. My feet, because it came from California. My blood was thin. I had no clothes, you know. And um, I had these big, fluffy, warm slippers that I would wear. And CBS was not the warmest place and we had dressing rooms upstairs and had to come down the stairs and be on the set and go back up to our dressing room so my, we I, I was cold all the time 
So I wore these big fluffy, you know, uh, thing feet on your feet and hair and curlers going back and forth, you know, rehearsing, going back up. Mary Stewart came out of her dressing room and took one look at me and said, so this is our sex symbol. <laughs> oh. She scared me to death. <laughs> and I remained scared of her the whole time I worked. <laughs> Lisa, so you filled in for a week. Do you remember your first day? Yeah, I had to cry and it was very emotional and I was scared because I I was I really wanted to be authentic and I wanted to produce real tears. Do you remember oh. that? Marie, I remember it vividly only because I was terrified that I wouldn't perform well uh, enough. No, I just, I feel like I've known you all of my life. Yeah. That's I, how, fun, how yeah. funny this is. But you really put me at ease, actually. And did I really? Yes, you did. Oh, and that's, that's nice to know. Yeah, and that's how we got through the scene together. And it was really, I have to credit Marie for, for really... That's great. Okay. I tell you really what, like just taking under her wing and telling me it was going to be okay. And well, uh, when I was speaking of Sam and Cat, when I was on search for tomorrow, uh, you know they had uh, uh, people come in to be uh, what do they call them? Uh, acolytes? No, no, no. It's uh, interns and young people come in, and you know, and they would get you coffee and you know, get you a roller. Yeah, or something. interns. And yeah, you're right, interns. Fade in, fade out. A hundred years later, I'm on Sam and Cat, and the associate producer came up to me and he said, "Did you know, my very first day in show business, I was an intern on Search for Tomorrow, oh, and I God. used to get coffee for you." And I went, "Oh my goodness! I hope I was nice to you." <laughs> <laughs> and he said. Does that mean you weren't nice? <laughs> That's, see, you, you have to be nice to everybody because you never know when you're going to meet them again. That's true. You know, going up and going down. 100%. Lisa, what, what, what do you think you learned all those years working opposite Marie? How to act? <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you what, I think um, uh, many of my characters subsequent, not Wendy, because Wendy was yeah. different than Lila and different than Ava. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Ava was that character that Marie was basically on, mm. on Loving. Yeah. Did you she know, do all the wrong things, but for the right reason? It, absolutely. <laughs> And I had a front row seat to the best right there. And oh. she did. I mean, I, I, I will. What we, what we were doing. I, absolutely. I would do, you know, whatever. Of, this, um, whatever uh, Marie the, in my subsequent role. Whatever the scene was. Oh, hold um, on, Marie, because we can't hear everybody. Okay. Lisa, sorry. Lisa. What, the, go ahead. What the scene was. I would do my homage to Betty Davis or Susan Hayward or, you know, I picked these fabulous women in the movies and I would play the scene as if I were that person. So that's what you were learning. And mine was Vivian Lee and, and uh, Elizabeth Taylor and Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. <laughs> that's great. Roof. Uh, so those were my mental images especially for Lila, it was definitely um, Elizabeth oh, Taylor. Cat. Bleh, bleh, you know. <laughs> That's great. You know, Marie, I'm curious, who or what influenced you on going into this profession? Well, uh, my mother married seven times before I was 12. She Whoa. was, she was uh, an uneducated Indian from Oklahoma, and my father was killed in World War II when I was about a day old. I'm so so there was my teenage that. mother with the baby to raise, with no education, no money, no job, no anything. So mother and I sort of grew up together. And I, I lived with a lot of different people, and I tried to fit in. We moved almost every year, you know. So here I'm trying to fit in. Well, that's the best acting lesson you'll ever have in your life. 
life was my acting lesson. So all of these women, I love to play them, all the women who raised me. I love to play especially the women who were not very nice to me. Because <laughs> so, it's great. So each character had a bit of those women. Oh, believe me, they did, yes. Oh, yes. Wow. And Lisa, I mean, you didn't really, I guess, have much of a choice at four months old. Your mom put you in the modeling, but did the, did the acting it just... It was the way I said goo goo gaga. You know? <laughs> Were you even saying goo goo gaga at four months? <laughs> I'm sure I was. I must have said did you, something, um, but it's not like she ever... tortured me and put me in it. It's like right. I did enjoy it. Was there a moment where you knew this is what you wanted to do? Yeah. 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 When my mother and I were on a horseback, we were ranching sheep in Lampasas County, Texas. And she said, sister, what do you want to be when you grow up? And she was expecting, you know, a cowboy or fireman or something like that. And I said, I'm going to be a famous actress and take you around the world. Well, it didn't take her around the world and it wasn't very famous, but... <laughs> I'm still at it. <laughs> You're still at it. And, yeah. and Lisa, was there a moment for you? So for me, it, I, I, like I said, four months old, I had my SAG card at five, you know, I, oh. I was just in it. Um, so to me, it was as natural as breathing. Isn't that what everyone did? Well, I knew as I got <laughs> older, not everyone did that, but, <laughs> but I did that and that was what I did. So I think it was uh, basically the moment was um, when I was, tr I was eight, about eight, 18 and I was thinking about college as most seniors in high school do. And I had decided that I really did want to go to college. And I was trying to enroll in Fordham University because I lived on 57th Street and the studio was down the street on 57th Street and Fordham was right there. And I, I every time I tried to enroll in school, it seemed like I would get another job or the job. You know, I, I was I was working already. Oh, darn. <laughs> no, but it, it just it didn't. I, you know, I'd either have another, not just the soap, but some other gig to do. You were and I sort job. of asked myself, well, wait, people go to college to get a career. I really kind of already <laughs> have one. Maybe I should just stick with what I'm doing. Um, and that was it. I never ended up in college. I mean, so. you worked nonstop at that time. I didn't have time for college. Yeah, you worked nonstop. <laughs> Um, Marie, <laughs> fans were asking uh, if you can talk about some of Stephanie's loves. Anthony George, Val Dufour, Brett Halsey, oh, Wayne Tippett. Val Dufour. <laughs> Val Dufour. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we love to tease Val. He was so serious. And he was just <laughs> an easy mark. You know, <laughs> we just love to tease him. Um, yeah. Those totally. are the best. The easy marks are the best. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And well, see, I have always been sort of an easy mark because I don't really quite understand what's going on sometimes. But uh, so I'm pretty easy to tease. Wayne Tippett. Oh, my Wayne God. Wayne Tippett. Wayne <laughs> Tippett. He was another Texan, you see. And I knew where the Tippett hardware store was in Gatesville, Texas. <laughs> and it seemed like we, you know, he was kind of like my cousin. It was great. Oh, gosh, it was great wonderful, wonderful people to play against. Just terrific. And also, you know, sometimes if the, if the, if the, the gentleman uh, wasn't too secure in his lines, I could always tell because the little beads of sweat would start popping out on their forehead if they felt like they were about to go up. And in those days, there was no fixing it in post. You just did that damn scene all the right. way through. Right. Telepump. Right. Day. See? So I learned my lines, his lines, and then I would make sure that they came into the dressing room and said the lines so that we could get a rhythm going because it's tossing a ball back and forth, you know. Sometimes I found I was playing tennis with myself, though, because if the person was kind of getting uh, frozen oh up, you know this, don't uh, you? Or, un yeah. or unprepared. 
Yeah. We were like live, but even though we weren't live. Live to tape. That's how we shot it. Yeah. Yeah. But Basically, remember that time we did go live on Sir? Oh, yes. And the kid, the youngest person in the, he came up to me and said, I'm the only person that didn't go up on their lines. And I thought you're the only person that didn't know what was at stake too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were all just flummoxed. And all of us had theater experience. I can't imagine doing live uh, daytime. I mean, I know it's like theater, it. but it is. Yeah. yeah. It, it's something. What did they say that, you know that the uh, the, the original it was all a hoax. I'm sure they said the origin the uh, the show that they had prepared uh, something had happened to the tape. Well, and yeah. they didn't have time to shoot it, so we had to go live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, God bless. Live from New York. <laughs> it's search oh, for tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> Lisa, do you have a favorite love interest at uh, search? A favorite love interest. Oh my goodness! On search well, for tomorrow. Well, let, let's first. Uh, let's talk first. Your first kiss though was with Kevin Bacon, wasn't it? You it was, oh. and and I was. It was terrible. <laughs> I <laughs> I had never kissed on camera before, and I was very awkward. Well, I mean, it was fine, but I thought it was terrible. You know, because I oh. wasn't. I didn't know. I didn't. I hadn't kissed at all in my own life. So really, well, did I actually, I did. That's not true. But anyway, it, it was, it was my first on-screen kiss and I just was, I, I, I thought he was cute. So that, that didn't help me, but it, it should have helped me, but instead it made me feel weird. And so consequently, I think the whole thing was kind of awkward, but oh. yeah. Kevin Bacon was my first on-screen kiss, yes. And it was in a fantasy scene, I remember that. So, because it wasn't a real kiss, it was a fantasy scene kiss. So, um, you know, I was having a fantasy that I was kissing him. So. Did you have this experience? Usually when you kiss, it's the noses. You have to figure out who's going to go this way and who's going to go this way. And generally we solve it by whoever speaks after the kiss, they put their nose right. toward the camera so that they can come out of it and say your line and you don't have to turn to say your line. So it's all choreography. <laughs> so the answer to your question, for me, it was Timothy Patrick Murphy, of course. Oh, oh, now, wait a minute. That's the love of my life. <laughs> he was wonderful. Yeah, they said we're giving your character a, a son, was, and he's yeah, grown. And I said, now. you can just stop right now. I'm not having a grown son. I'm not that old, you know. <laughs> well, he walked into the room, and there was this gorgeous young man, and I was I felt like Lisa. I just lost my heart to him, and you know when mm -hmm. I saw him, mm -hmm. It was very easy. We had a lot of chemistry. He was a very good actor. You yes. Know, whenever you work with very good actors, they make you better. Yes. And that's and that was Tim. And uh, and I and that doesn't hurt that it was probably my first real like on screen long term ongoing relationship on on the soap. So in many ways. It was a first as well. And I'm thankful for him because it was a good first experience. We had a lot of fun. But he was very kind too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That helps. Helps a yeah. lot. Helps a lot. Um, Lisa, 10 years old on Broadway with Angela Lansbury. Rob was asking, what, what do you remember about that? Yeah. I have to say, I I have had the most wonderful older women in my life when I was a kid that just were so gracious. And like Marie, Angela was like that too. She treated all the children um, with such love and care and concern. And she, she was just such a class act, such oh. a classy lady. Um, just, you know, and even at that tender age, I knew, I knew that, you know, mm -hmm. and I knew how fortunate I was to be working with her. 
um, again, I, I, I was so blessed to be constantly surrounded with such extraordinary talent. Um, Marie, you know, Angela, oh my gosh, you know, I, I, I don't know that I would have had the career I had um, because I wasn't formally trained. Hmm. These were the ladies that trained me. And you know what? You, I got trained by the, some of the best. It was on the job training. And, yeah. um, you know, you learn by doing anyway, you know, so, honestly. Right, you know, I, 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 for years, maybe there was an impurity that I hadn't been formally trained. So I did go and, you know, to classes and try to learn this method and that method and that method. But, um, but it, you know, bottom line is I, I feel like you either have it or you don't. And, and the training <laughs> happens, <laughs> right? Either you can do it or you can't, especially soaps with the amount of dialogue that we have. 100%. Well, but you really are lucky, you know, because you're right. I mean, 10 years old, Angela, then you go over to search with Marie. I mean, you know, you, the fact that you're, you're telling us and, and we know because you and Marie are doing this together, but the fact that they're so gracious, but I mean, my God, to not have training and to train with these talented women. Oh, must, but must have been an incredible. Lisa has good instincts. She has marvelous, really honest instincts and you can't beat it. And I don't think you can teach people how to act. You can teach them that, like the the mechanics of stand here, look up into the light, you know. Because well, I, I have this always used lighting. to say that. I carry yeah. that they have overhead them. lighting, and your eyebrows create a shadow if you look down. So you always learn to look up <laughs> into the light. But you can learn the mechanics of it. And but you can't really teach family. somebody how to be, how to honestly lie. But, but, but being there, you know, opposite people who are willing and giving. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's making me think, Lisa, of Laura Wright, who came to same, Loving. Same thing. Same thing from a gas station. Yes. <laughs> you know, she was pumping gas and got Loving yes. and then is surrounded, surrounded by all these people. Well, Marie, but the, and that's just it. When I say she trained me, she she helped me to trust my instincts like she would often say to me just what she just said honey you know you've got good instincts you're really good you know she would encourage me yeah. you know to to do that to just trust my mm -hmm. instincts you know um yeah that that was how she trained me the rest was yeah she's a natural well, but the, the rest is you worked hard but but it's you know you might have worked opposite somebody who didn't really care to <laughs> Yeah, Share that's that. just it. Uh, it could have been the. It could have been. Oh, get these pesky kids out of here! Yeah. <laughs> but she was so wonderful, and she was you know, so and beautiful. and they could have they they could have <laughs> both women you know could have said you know hey you know kid <laughs> go get you know kind of like when we were at the CBS broadcast center. I went up. Did you remember uh, who was the guy, Mister Green Jeans or? Uh, I forget. It was one of the shows, the kids shows. Yeah. And they shot it in the same. Uh, I asked him, I forget if it was um, red and yellow and pink and green, purple and orange and blue. I remember the theme song. Anyway, I, I was <laughs> in the truck and at the elevator, I ran up to this gentleman who was doing a kid's show. And I said, are you so-and-so? And he goes, no, I'm Walter Cronkite, kid. You know, and he got in the elevator. Oh, oh. oh. Later. That reminds I me, I, you know, I came down my the steps out of uh, the CBS Center one time, and there were all these paparazzi there, you know, cameras, cameras, and I thought, oh, how nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, Henry Kissinger was coming oh. down the steps <laughs> right after me. <laughs> Well, that I remember is... the kids show that, that it was, but at the time I was a fan. You know? Yeah, Captain Kangaroo. Captain Kangaroo. Oh! That's it. You're right. And yes. I said to you, Captain Kangaroo. Thank you, David. David. David uh, told us our one of our fans. David said uh, Captain Kangaroo. Yeah, that's great. That's hey, Marie. Great. You that's know it, you. That's it. That's it. That's exactly. Huh? It. Uh, Marie, we were going to do this show back in March with Michael Corbett. So, so oh, yeah. Can, so oh, can you Michael. talk about 
you know, Stephanie loved making Warren's life hell. What was it like working with Michael? Oh, I loved it. I could be as mean as I wanted to be. You know, I could play all those ladies who, who were not very nice to me and I could direct it all to Michael. And he just, he was, so, he was like an easy target, you know? <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it was great. Oh, I loved playing her because you could get all of the antisocial um, instincts or, you know, feelings that you have out. And then you didn't have to go home and kick the cat, you know? And it was very interesting because I, I would go home and I would buy some groceries at the corner grocery store. And it was kind of like a little, you know, stand. And uh, the, the gentleman who ran it said, oh, tell me what's happening. And so I would tell him the storyline. And you would see these uh, hatted and gloved upper East Side ladies leaning in to hear. And I finally turned to them and said, oh, it's the story in a soap opera. I mean, it isn't real life. And they'd go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of our fans just said, I never forgot some of the lines Stephanie had back to Warren. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> they, they, they remember it well. When you think back to your experience on Search for Tomorrow, what you know, what are you most proud of? What makes, you know, what do you think about? Well, that's a very interesting thing because I was looking for an agent in New York as I had come from California. And uh, I went to see uh, one person and he said, well, you know, when you have a show that you're proud of, let me know and I'll watch it. And I got up and said, obviously I'm in the wrong room. Every time I work, I'm proud of what I do. But the wonderful thing that, that Search gave me was this character was so full and she grew as I grew. She started out being just a little grifter wanting to do this and that. And then she grew as, you know, I was on the show for 10 years. So as I matured, she matured. And I got to play things like breast cancer and a mastectomy, which, you know, is kind of good heavenly days. Uh, but I would only do it if we could do something, uh, a teaching element. You know, you can go here to get help. There is help for you. There is support, these support groups, you know, this, that, and that other thing. So, you know, it, 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 it also enriched my life because I was able to develop turning on a dime. If you start a scene one way, you can turn and make it, you know, uh, deliver the dialogue surprisingly because every time when you say the lines la 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 it's kind of okay fine but kind of boring but if you there's a twist in it and you you shift energy quickly then you you know because people are let's face it ironing they're you know they're diapering they're cooking they're listening to these shows because they are, they're, they're, it's their family and it's a habit, habitual with them. So you, you just, and you get, you uh, attract their attention if you shift right. the energy just a little bit. Lisa, Robert was curious, was it difficult when uh, Marie left and you had another actress playing? Absolutely. Yeah, of course it was. Yeah. But that's showbiz, you know, the show has to go on and you have to do it and you've got to take your personal feelings out of it. It's just not the same. Um, and so it was just it was just incredibly different. Um, there, I mean, Marie and I had such a history, you know, mm -hmm. and I think we brought that to the screen. So I had to develop a new sort of relationship. And it was just it was just a given because it was just a, a, there for so many years. And then. Right. But that's your job, right? You're an actor. That's, that's what you have to do. You gotta make you gotta make it work, right? And it wasn't bad. It was just different. And yeah. there was like an adjustment that had to be yeah. made. And yeah. you know, uh, having taken over a role from from another actress, um, you know, not not Andrea, because we were young, young then, but in subsequent years, um, you know. I've seen it happen in other venues. You know, you, 
that person. It's not there. You know, they, they're just doing, you know, they're doing the best, you know, the best they can and they need your support. Yeah. It's hard. That's really all you have to remember is you, you're on the, you know, you're on the same plane together, right? Yeah. You know, you want everybody to succeed and, and you're, you know, I, it's fine. You just, you know, you just, you know, you do it. And then you do develop a different relationship and it's, and it's also good. Right. Yeah. Marie, we talked backstage, but I didn't hear the story. Uh, Sally Sussman, who created the soap opera Generations, is the one who mentioned that you knew Erna Phillips. So could you tell us your Erna Phillips story? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I was at my very first job, Days of Our Lives, and I was very young. I was in my 20s. I was just out of college, and... I was barely 20, I think. And I was working with McDonald Carey. Oh. Mm -hmm. And um, Erna was there to give uh, her, sub not support, but to uh, the Cordays had asked her to please come in and help them, you know, get the show up. And, and, um, and she was going to give them the benefit of her experience. Well, wow. she was going around on a lectern and the lectern was like, and she would look over it like this. And it was like Kilroy was here because all you could see were her eyes and her little claw, well, her little hands, you know, and she had hair the color of mine and she had these little ringlets. She wore it up with a lot of little ringlets here. So all I saw was this, and she got too damn close. And Mac and I were trying to rehearse the scene, and I, I, I said, I, I said to him, "How do you work like this?" And he said, "Lock it in with your eyes and fuck them." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, so, she probably yeah. was frightening. Well, oh, it was because she was like. A walking legend and but the walking legend was doing this looking <laughs> at you while you were trying to work you know? wow speaking of but, legends lisa at 13 you play john travolta's little sister in saturday night fever oh my um, god again Sur yes founded by greatness right i mean yeah. but i you know it just get? made me think of your children have they seen that uh, well, there was a lot of cussing and things in that movie. So no, I really didn't want my children to see that movie. I mean, honestly, I'm, sh I'm shocked it hasn't been canceled, to be honest. And if you really look at it now um, in our current culture, right? Because yeah. they, they mean, there's everything not PC, everything not PC current in there and so no i really couldn't I, no, nothing is pc in saturday night fever i mean nothing and so no nothing and really if you really look at anyway um uh, it's a classic it was the time it, it depicted it well um and it, and, it, and it was it was a really banner movie for you know for what it was and and so yeah no they they really i don't think ever watched it they've seen my scene they've come to some of the reunions with me um this we have one often um they're getting less and less but um i mean we had the 10-year reunion the 20-year reunion the 30-year you know it just <laughs> so so yeah i mean they they yes no they, they they know about it but no i don't really think they've ever watched it from start to finish is there anything that stands out from college. is there anything that stands out from shooting that movie Oh my goodness! I had such a crush on John Travolta <laughs> uh, when I auditioned. Oh, no, yeah, he was in um, Welcome Back, Cotter. Yeah. And when I auditioned, I watched that show as a kid. So I was loved, like, loved that show. Oh my God, I want John Travolta, <laughs> Barbarino. You know, so I was just, like thrilled. <laughs> and I said to my, I said to my manager, I said, I am going to get this role. This is my role. And I and I went in there and I, I mean, I was so elated that I actually booked the job. So I was totally starstruck when he came on the set. Um, his hair was gone. That was that was great. Because, you know, but welcome back, Cotter. His hair was long. And then, you know, he had the Saturday Night Fever. 
do. And so he looked different. Um, but I remember a, a, a moment, and I talk about this a lot. I, I'm um, sorry. Um, I should have turned that off. Anyway, he, I, he, he, I had something in my eye and he, I said, he said, I can get that out for you. And I, I, and he's put your head back and I was leaning. Her heart's chair. fluttering. I was like, why, <laughs> why am I 10? He's like over me like this. And I'm thinking, oh, <laughs> if only I wasn't 10. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Um, that, I mean, to be part of such an iconic, you know, is incredible. Yeah. It's really. iconic. Speaking of iconic, another movie that I absolutely love, Marie. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> It's this time of year. Yay. It is that time of year. Correct. Yeah. What, what stands out in your mind from that experience? Well, Robert Goulet, of course. You know, everyone had a crush on Robert Goulet. And uh, he, he was kind of notorious for being sort of like a ladies' man, too. And uh, he came sort of, you know, across the floor, Robert Goulet, Rue, walk. Hello, I'm Robert Gouley. And I said, oh, yes, I know. I just finished working with Nikki, his daughter. Yeah, on she was on Guiding on Light. On Search for Tomorrow. Right. And, um, yeah. And he all of a sudden, he switched into being this kid from Canada. And we played this game. He smoked cigars, and they were very stinky. And he used to leave the cigar stub where I would find it, ooh, ooh, ooh. And we would play this game. And so finally, at the end, he he left it on the door of my car, on the, ha you know, the handle of the car door. So mm -hmm. I took it and mailed it to him in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love that. That's great. And we thought, all of us thought, because we had seen the prosthetics of that movie, and we thought, well, these don't look like good monsters. We just thought it was, we didn't know it was a send up. We had no idea. And when I auditioned for the role, I said to Timmy Burton, I said, how in the world did you get anybody to give you the money to make this film? You know, because it was strange on the paper, but uh, I didn't know it was a send up and who knew it was going to be this wonderful film. <laughs> Wonderful. I, I really wanted to see it on Broadway and never got around to it. Oh, oh, I didn't either. Yeah. Lisa, can you talk about playing Lila on Another World and working with Tom and Jensen and Matt and Robert Kelker Kelly? And what was your experience like in Another World? So fun. So fun. Um, one of the best, I think, experiences I, I ever had in daytime was Another World. It was so brief. But um, it was, I think it was because I was at a place in my life personally that was good, so good, that I, I was able to let go in that role in a way that I don't think I was free to do in previous roles. You know, I just, I enjoyed the pieces out of it. You know, I just absolutely had the best time. And again, working with good actors, it was fun. The role was so fun because, again, I got to get my, um, you know, cat on a hot tin roof frustrations out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lila, the Southern Belle from hell, you know. So anyway. She, she, <laughs> Do you, does Lila have a favorite man? Oh, gosh. I, that's so probably... Stephen, uh, probably Cancer. Stephen, you know, I, I, I would say Cass, of course, you know. Cass, of course. Yeah, well, you, I, and, you, I, and, you and Stephen brought the characters over to As the World Turns. Briefly, yeah. yes. Yes. But yeah, that was fun. That was fun. So, Marie, let's talk about your pottery. Oh, good. Yeah. When did you start? When I was a little girl. You I did. used to. Yes, I used to go to the creek bed and get the clay and did, I would make make little dolly dishes and then did I Did you would, make every one of these? Yeah. Wow. Yes. They're beautiful. Yes. 
thank you. And um, I would make my dolls dishes, you know, little cups and saucers and bowls and everything. And I would put them in the sun to dry. And then, and now I just put them in the kiln. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, I'm firing today. Oh, wow. <laughs> I have one of her teapots. They're quite unique. Thank you very much. Yes, I make lady teapots. And I made, uh, I was taken into a Comanche family, the descendants of Quanah Parker, the last great chief, when they were out free on the plains. And I did a pageant for them outdoors for about four or five years. And I was taken into family, and they gave me the most beautiful buckskin regalia, you know, beaded. It, just gorgeous. And I played that character outdoors for them. And um, I just recently donated that regalia to the Gene Autry Museum. Oh, and yeah. that regalia was the impetus of my making the Comanche lady teapot. And everybody said, well, why don't you just make, you know, a, a Zuni lady teapot and a corn maiden teapot and uh, a creek because my heritage my mother was creek and my father was choctaw and scots irish um and it's not unusual to be fair if you have blood you know but okay fine um so i did i, I started making a, a series of uh indian lady teapots and uh, do, you, do you sell your work Oh, yes, yes. I have four teapots in the gift shop of the Gene Autry Museum. And I have a show coming up at the uh, uh, Bolton Hall Museum here in Tahunga, where I have other things. And yeah, I show all around the country. Uh, if, people just, can, if people can buy it online, send mm -hmm. me the link via email and I'll put it up I on will. the YouTube page. I'll put it up on the YouTube page mariecheatham.com slash ceramics. I'll send it to you. I'll, I'll, I'll remember that and I'll add it to the page for sure, Marie. Yeah, thanks. That, okay. That, yeah. I love that. That's, that's I'm just great. about to open an Etsy store. Oh, good. I oh, mean, cool. You oh, are cool. the hardest working woman at your age. <laughs> Thank you, you very much. You and are. I, just, I just did an AT&T commercial. She Pray God it runs. Mm -hmm. Hey, Lisa, you mentioned Ava being an important role. Can you talk about your time at Loving and working with James Horan and Randy Mantooth? Wow. <laughs> That's a flashback. With, I'm sorry. You, you cut out for a minute. James Horan. Oh, gosh. Clayton. James, Randy Mantooth. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, just a blast. Like, just a blast. <laughs> The, some of the best memories that I have are loving just uh, because I was an adult. I wasn't growing up. It was made, you know, I was a mm. grown up role, you know, I was coming on as a, it was stressful. I came on and I replaced uh, Roya Mignot. And uh, uh, one of our but, fans asked, had you seen her work before? I did. I thought she's a wonderful Ava. And I wondered how the audience would receive me uh, being so different. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we approached the role differently. And so, you know, there was always that, you know, hey, you know, are they going to like me as much? Um, I was happy that I was able, thank God, to successfully take over that role um, and uh, just had the best, some of the best years of my life on loving. <laughs> really, truly. And you work with Laura a lot, right? You, you and Laura. Yeah, Laura. Um, yeah, we still we are still in touch, Laura and I. That's very hard to do yeah. to take over an, an established role. Very hard. Yes. Yes. Very scary. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. It, it, it's got. Did you know when you auditioned that it was to replace somebody? Yes. Okay, because sometimes they don't tell the actors, which is no. not. <laughs> I've heard that before, which could be a scary. Yes, scary. Totally, you know, totally scary. Marie, eighty plus years, you know, sixty plus years working. Yeah. Yeah. It, do you have a favorite role? It's usually the one I'm playing at the moment. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I don't know. Betty Breland on Heart of Dixie would come close. Stephanie actually was my very favorite because I got to be so many different things. You know, 10 years, you transmogrify the character changes as you change as Say a that woman. word again. I loved it. <laughs> Transmogrify. <laughs> That's a really big word. That's a really big word, Marie. Isn't it great? <laughs> yeah, I loved it. Yeah. But she was so <laughs> many different word. things, and she uh, came from doing the wrong things but for the right reasons, and she was never really, really spiteful. She was trying to protect her, her daughter, or uh, she felt it was not fair or unjust, or, mm -hmm. you know, she, she would react. Like I do. I mean, the the thing that gets me the most is it doesn't make any logic and it's unfair. Well, listen, there's only one fair out here. It's in Pomona once a year and we don't go to it. So get over it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, Marie, um, you know, I, I mentioned Michael Corbett. Marsha McCabe was also on there. And you, oh. Stephanie had some enemies. Sonny and Kathy Courtney Simon. Can you talk about those ladies? Yes, I like them so much. I like them so much. <laughs> and it's so wonderful, much fun to play mean catty things. If you like somebody, you know, when I left the show, Marsha, we used to go to the same place to get our little paws done. <laughs> and the at the lady at the place, she only had numbers for your of uh, uh nail polish and so Marsha gave me a, a present to go get num my number 87 fixed <laughs> and when people always used to ask me later on that was very sweet of her by the way they used to ask me later on why are you doing this and I said I'm doing it for old number 87 you know <laughs> <laughs> doing That's it to make some money <laughs> But I, I, I have been fortunate in the fact that I've been playing iconic characters most of my life, most of it. Yeah. And Marie, Marie Horton on Days of Our Days Lives. Of our life. She you, was the iconic victim. You know, everything. And you you're the only Horton alive? I am the last surviving member of the Horton family. That will wow. scare you to death. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Huh. Wow, wow, so wow. we just keep on going, you know. I think it's eating all that good food when I was a kid on the farm. And I still <laughs> grow my own vegetables out here. I do. I have raised beds now, and I'm going to plant my winter greens, kale, cabbage, and spinach. And oh. Yeah. I'm coming, I'm coming over for <laughs> Okay. So the critters stop eating them, Marie. Lisa asked if the, the critters, critters stop eating, eating them. them. Critters stop eating them. Say again. Now that they're in the raised beds, the critters stopped eating them. Oh, that gopher. I swear to goodness, I was going to get my shotgun out. I just felt like Elmer Fudd. You know, I, I watched that kale plant just go right down. And I thought, I'm going to kill him. And he poked <laughs> like Elmer Fudd. And he looked around. And I thought, you son of a gun. You know, so I, I had to put down a good um, mesh, like uh, heavy chicken wire. And I got these two foot high beds and rocks yeah. and then soil. And then see, you don't have to bend over so far if you do that. So that's great. That's so funny. Lisa, yeah. um, can you tell us about your experience? I mean, again, you've worked designing women, Dixie Carter and Hal Holbrook. Ugh. Come on now. More more legends. Legends like, everywhere. Seriously. <laughs> How lucky can a girl get? <laughs> I know. I, I, I mean, I, I, I want to get to it quickly. We'll get to real estate. But to think about that now, you're so, you know, when you look back, do you, does it blow your mind when you think of all that you did? <laughs> Blows my mind. I just have to give glory to God because I got to be honest with you. I, I didn't have anything to do with it. Right. I mean, I just oh. showed up and I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I just was very blessed. What a, what a hoot. How Holbrook. Right. I mean, oh. come on. Great fun. And, and the iconic show. 
iconic show and I got to be part of it. I, there's a little story behind that. Um, I was supposed to be hired to be Dixie's daughter. Um, and then I don't know if you remember, uh, the show went off the air for a bit. Uh, and then it, it had such a cult following that uh, they it came back on the air. Oh, remember? Do you that. remember that? Yeah. It, it, so, so they I guess they had canceled it, but it it, it was fans wouldn't have it. So, um, so when they Smart. when they re, when they regrouped, um, they decided not to bring on a daughter, um, and and so they actually wrote that episode as a like with me in mind. So they they so they could hire me to do. That's great. That's amazing. That part. So I got to do the episode, and it was a hoot. I, I mean, crazy. Who, who the you know when you think of the people you've worked with, and Marie too. I mean, you both have worked with. I mean, it's been great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fans, and I I should ask because of search for tomorrow. Fans were asking about. Uh, Morgan Fairchild. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. What do you remember? Morgan. Well, being from, she used to tell people I used to babysit her. I never did. <laughs> but she was fond of telling people that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. What are you most proud of when you look back at your acting careers? that I'm still doing it. <laughs> Marie, do you still enjoy it as much as you did at the beginning? Well, as I've gone older now, I play grandmothers and I have a gray wig that I wear all the time. And um, as you know, the industry is kind of, they're not very nice to older women. Uh, they generally have you doing something that's a joke, like, you're doing something that uh, an older woman usually doesn't do. Okay. You know? Yeah. And um, that can be fun. And the things that I'm called to do are not not all that much fun. You know, they're not as juicy as um, Stephanie for certain. Uh, unless you're playing someone like Betty Breland, who you know who says things like, well, if you saw it, why'd you step in it? You know? <laughs> that was pretty juicy. Yeah, yeah that one was pretty juicy, juicy still. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so I'm looking for another role like Betty Breland on, on Heart of Dixie. What was Reba like? Say again? It, that's Reba, right? With Reba? No, who was that with? Heart of Dixie. Heart of Dixie was... All those people, and I can't <laughs> right now. I can't think of them a name, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm trying to remember who's who's the man who played uh, in Animal House. He played Beaver. I don't know. Well, anyway, I can't think of his name right now. But uh, oh it's sort of like. Um, how long, you know, or when, what year was that? <laughs> Names and years sort of elude me sometimes. Yeah, I hear, I hear you. The same, same for me. Yeah, unless so, I reverse it. <laughs> so Lisa, you said you decided to leave the business when your daughter was born? Yeah, uh, she was about 16 months old. And um, no, she wasn't the sole reason, you know, that I decided well, to leave. No, no, I meant, but that's when you but decided. That's about. Yeah. Do you ever miss acting? Yeah, that that was that was about the, the time, yes. Do you ever miss it? Um, do I miss it? Um, I was ready to be done with the business. Um, so, no, I don't miss it. <laughs> I can't say that I do. I, I, I have such fond and wonderful, incredible memories. Um, and I, I, my takeaway was just sheer joy. Um, but I, I, I had reached a, a time when for me, it was uh, um, time to move on. Mm -hmm. So 
I don't, if, I don't, I don't, miss, I miss people. I miss. Hmm? If your kids wanted to follow in. Oh, <laughs> that doesn't help me. Um, I think in many ways I grew up a little too soon being in the business. And uh, there were some downsides to that. Um, I, it would have been in some ways nice to just be a kid. Yeah, and sure. in, in some ways, nice to not have to worry if I gained two pounds at any given point in time, um, especially the roles I played. Um, so, you know, the vixen, the femme fatale, the seductress, you know, you, you just, you know, I don't think I had a bowl of ice cream, a full bowl of ice cream until I like left the business. Oh. You know, what I mean? like, I'm not even kidding. You know, I think I took a bite. You know, I, <laughs> I, don't, yeah, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I it totally was, do. I, I, I've been I, around a few, few <laughs> actresses. Yes. You know, I like to eat. So anyway, but it just, it was, it was, it was just time yeah. to, to go. Um, and I had done it. You know, I walked the red carpet. I dated a rock star. I, you know, I, I'd signed, I mean, I had been success. You know, I just, it was, it yeah. was a good run. You know, yeah, it was a good sure. run and it was time to go. But I have a theory that you do your best acting in your everyday life and you interact with people, when you sell them a home, mm -hmm. wow. yeah. you have to be empathizing with your clients. And it is the basis of all acting in the fact that you understand their needs mm -hmm. and you're able to speak to them in the language that they would really like to hear. So it, I think it's a great role, right? So I, <laughs> I feel, I feel very, I really enjoy real estate. I am a people yep. person. Um, I, I have always wanted to do something meaningful. Um, when I hand over the keys and make somebody's dreams come true, to me, that's incredibly that you know, meaningful. That is a big deal. That is a big um, deal. You know, dealing with the the public is is fun for me. I think I think you know it's communications. I think acting is that communications. Um, it's the same gift, if you will. I think that's what you're saying, Marie. It just yeah. in a you put yourself in, in their shoes to understand mm -hmm. their needs. And then mm -hmm. you're able, uh, and it's, you know, putting somebody in a home, that's not something that's transitory. That lasts for years and years. It must make you feel really good. It does. I do get a warm fuzzy when I do it and I'm able to, to bring it to a close. And that's even for great. sellers when they need to move on. I mean, it is almost like, you know, Marie, it's so interesting how you, how you said that because it is like a character you play who we all fall in love with. You know, I'll never forget the people who helped me get into my home, you know? Yes, like the, absolutely. Your your home. And for yeah. many, it's a, a lot of people, it's a first home. So yeah. it really is something that always sticks yeah. with them. Yes. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm obsessed. I eat, sleep, and breathe real estate. I watch real estate shows when I'm, you know, on my downtime. I, I love, I love dealing with um, investors and flipping homes. I love to see the transformation. And you have to remember, I started when I was four months old as an actress. Right? Yeah. I mean, I started modeling when I was four months old. This was something I chose. Yeah. Right. To do. Yeah. And I, I don't even think I chose it. I sort of just fell into it. It was like, um, I just, <laughs> I, I could tell you the story another time, but it, it, it just, just like my career in acting, it was just something that I just started doing. Um, I moved out here to Lake Opakong and a bunch of different friends from the city said, wow, what a great place to live. Why don't you find me a house? Oh. So I went around trying to find houses for friends and found out that I was pretty good at it. And, you know, when I sold a $1.2 million house and didn't get the commission because I wasn't a licensed realtor, I said, you know, I might want to try to get a license to do this. <laughs> and so, because wow. I that agent had nothing to do with it. I went to an open house. I found it. I called them. I said, hey, there's this house. It's, you know, perfect for you. And they close. And, um, you know, somebody said to me, I think you should probably try to do it. It just, it was the same kind of thing. I just... It just kind of happened. 
Crazy. I mean, story of my life. Story. yeah, that's a, exactly. Seriously. <laughs> Ladies, this has been a delight. Thank you so much for spending the hour here. Thank you for having us. I'm so glad it worked, Marie. We got it to work. Right. <laughs> we got Lisa, it to work. I'm so happy to see you, honey. I'm really happy to see you. Oh, Marie, we have to we have to see each other in person. I, I wish we didn't live so far away. I do. I love you. <laughs> Stay Thank well, you, Lisa. Alan. Stay well, Marie. Have a great weekend, ladies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. You're so welcome. Bye bye. Thanks, everybody, for watching today. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Lisa, for joining us. Take a moment to subscribe to my YouTube channel down below and turn on notifications for all upcoming shows. You'll get reminded uh, when a show is happening next. Have a great weekend. I will see you all on Wednesday when Vincent Van Patten joins me live. Not the tennis pro and actor, but his son, new author Vincent Van Patten. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you on Wednesday.